Hello and welcome. I'm here today to tell you a bit about the industry that I love and that is publishing and book selling. Hopefully I will be able to inspire you and tell you just what a range of jobs and skills there are in the industry. So first of all, a little tiny bit about me so you know who's speaking to you today. My name is Debbie Williams and I am a publisher, bookseller and educator and I've been doing that job for over 25 years now, it doesn't feel like it. Um, I've been really, really lucky in my career and uh, gone from working on the shop floor as a bookseller for Waterstones in Lancaster um, and I moved to head office just at the time when Harry Potter was published. Um, I was the spokesperson for Harry Potter um, I got to organise all of those fantastic events up and down the country um, and when I left Waterstones I set up a course in publishing at the University of Central Lancashire um, and also a publishing house of my own which I went uh, on to run with the students on the course um, at uh, University of Central Lancashire it's called UCLan Publishing um, and uh, I went on to win Independent Publisher of the Year for that publisher, which was fantastic for the students. And I've been lucky enough uh, to travel all over the world doing exciting publishing projects and selling rights and things like that. And I'll explain a little bit more about how you could do that as a career as well, um, including places as exciting as the North Pole, <coughs> Australia, Greenland and even Africa. And I've lost count over the years how many people have asked me how I got into publishing and book selling and where they can get their start as well so today I thought I would answer a few of those questions and take you through what publishing actually is what jobs there are in the industry and a few tips on how you can get into it as well then you can make up your own mind as to whether you want to pursue a career in this fantastic business so first of all, let's address really a fundamental question um, and one that can be answered in many, many different ways. What is publishing? I mean, it might seem like an obvious question, but it's surprisingly not easy to answer. And sometimes when we talk about publishing, we include magazines and we include newspapers. And many of the jobs in those industries do actually have the, the skills which cross over. For example, writing um, blurbs for the back of books um, requires very similar skills as writing short articles in magazines does. And editing articles for magazines and newspapers require very similar skills to editing novels and short stories. And then just to complicate things, we have the advent of digital. Um, and we now have many different things that we might call books. Um, audiobooks, for example, have massively expanded recently. Um, we saw a rise of about 65%, maybe more, um, during the pandemic. So, you know, audiobooks have really grown. And then there are interactive ebooks and apps, which um, some people might seem more like games and movies in content at times, and certainly offer some really exciting possibilities for the future. So some of these formats have been hotly debated in the industry, um, but offer some really interesting features, um, like being able to record your own voice and map it onto an ebook so that if you're away, for example, you can still listen to your dad or your mum or your guardian reading you that really treasured story. Um, you can imagine the impact that might have when uh, a loved one is in the services or in the forces, for example, and away from home a lot. Um, so people are also a little bit confused um, as to what I actually do as a publisher. <laughs> to be honest, not even my mum knows what I do. Um, people presume that I write the books, which as a publisher you don't, the author does that. Um, they presume that I print the books, but I don't, the printer does that. So if I don't write the books um, and I don't print them, what do I do as a publisher? Well, it's basically everything in between. And um, from a moment a wonderful story lands in the inbox, it's our job as a publisher to make sure 
that we uh, make the story as good as it possibly can be, that it looks as lovely as it possibly can be, and appeals to as many people as possible, and reaches them at the right place, at the right price, um, and in whatever format is appropriate for that story to reach its perfect reader. So publishers are really good at spotting great stories, knowing what readers want and when and in what format and knowing how to make the, the, the object, whether it's an ebook or an audio book or a book, look as appealing as possible and how to get that fantastic product into the hands of readers. It is literally their superpower. And if you have a love of stories, there is no better feeling than helping an author reach a reader and transforming lives. So all publishing actually means is making the ideas public. That is it. Putting the ideas, perceptions and stories of experienced but also debut writers in front of the world's eyes because it is such a wide meaning. There's like a magnitude of roles within a publishing house, many of which you might even not have thought of. For this reason, we need a really diverse workforce with people with skills that you might not expect. You know, for example, from data analysts to film producers. So today I'm gonna to take you through just a few of these and then you can see how you might fit in. So first of all, let's tackle a very good question. Why would you want to work in publishing? OK, so I'm going to be completely honest with you here. Unless you get to be like one of the top um, level people in publishing, it's not the best paid job in the world. Um, you'll sometimes also be working to very tight deadlines just to make sure that the book or the magazine or newspaper or the audio book makes it to readers on time um, and within budget. So I guess if you're really motivated by money, it's probably not the career for you. So why might you want to work in publishing? I'll give you a few good reasons. So first of all, you get to do what you love. If you love stories in any format and genre and the thought of telling people, lots of people about them really excites you as it does me, there isn't a better job in the world. Since I found book selling and publishing, I never dread getting out of bed in the morning. And what a great thing that is. I love my job. That isn't to say that there aren't stresses at times over deadlines and pressures, but on the whole, it's great. Um, as you'll spend a lot of your life at work, it's my opinion that your life will be better if you do something that you love. So most publishers would definitely agree with me on this front. And uh, proof is in the pudding. They hardly ever leave the industry once they enter it. Also, um, you, you really do know what matters and really makes a difference to people's lives. There's simply no better feeling than getting a letter from a, le a reader, especially a, a child reader because they are starting to read and write, saying that the book that they love and you've worked hard on has really made a difference to their lives. You know it's going to stay with them for life and you know that you've made their life better in some way. In my research as a publishing academic, I'm also involved in studies which show stories and books have the, tra have the power to transform the direction of life for a child and affect communication, aspirations, achievement throughout their entire life. And as a care leaver myself, I'm living proof of this, which is why I'm so utterly passionate about what I do and publishing and books. You're never bored. It's absolutely true. I have a bit of a butterfly mind and I'm curious about everything. Um, and if you are like that, then publishing is fantastic. No days ever the same. So there's very little chance you will be bored. Um, and one day you could be working on Harry Potter. Uh, the next day you could be working on a book about sharks. Um, the next day, you could be working on a picture book about a dog called Ella who loves socks. It really is a very, very varied um, job. 
You work with loads of different people all over the world. And if you're a people person and you like finding out about different cultures and working with a range of different people, that is fantastic. Um, you can't publish stories and make books or ebooks or audiobooks alone. You have to work with a huge team. And some of those people are very remote from where you are and they live very different lives. For example, when I was putting a book together all about the Northern Lights, I worked with communities right across the globe from the Greenland to Arctic. Um, photographers based in Sweden and Norway, an illustrator who was based in Eastern Europe, uh, a designer in Manchester, um, an editor in Cornwall and the rest of the team who were in uh, London and Preston. Um, so I enjoy getting to know lots of creative people and learning about their lives and their cultures and working with them on a common project that's close to all of our hearts. Um, and this is even more true if you decide to pursue a career in rights. Um, that's where you basically sell the right to publish a book in different countries and in different languages. Um, and in that job, you get to travel the world. And I'll come on to that a little bit more um, as we go through the various jobs that are available in publishing. You get the chance to be really creative. So if you're someone that's really good at art and design and coming up with really creative ideas, there are quite a few jobs in publishing that might be suitable for you. Um, so as a, as a publishing designer, um, you can make, basically make the book look beautiful with cover art, illustrations inside, and you get to work with lots of different illustrators. Um, so even choosing the right font, if uh, it's a book with just words, uh, is a really creative and important job because it changes our reading experience. Some parts of publishing are really creative, but you might not expect it. So marketing, for example, involves a lot of creativity. You have to think of lots of different ways to get people to notice the book, but you also have to design a lot of great looking materials such as adverts, posters, social media posts, even TikToks. And you have uh, the most amount of say over how the book cover looks, because that is the biggest job um, of, of, of a book in, in, in terms of marketing, because people really do judge books by their covers. And if you're really good at filmmaking and you have skills in drama and you love drama and, and um, being on stage, then um, those are also skills that are sought over in publishing too. As I've said before, audio books are massively popular and they're definitely on an upwards trend that's not gonna change. So making an audio book is really similar to directing a play. Um, you know, you have to edit the manuscript so that it's like a screenplay with directions and prompts for the actor. Um, audition the right actor, direct them and then edit the recording. So also many aspects of marketing now involve those skills as well, because um, you have to produce YouTube videos that are maybe like book trailers for the book. And TikToks have also become very, very popular. So. Um, you know, these are also important because it might help you sell the rights to make a film or a TV programme. Um, so a film producer is much more likely to look at what you've done in terms of like a book trailer and think, oh, yeah, that would make a great movie. So, you know, having these skills is so important in publishing. It is a great career if you're good at lots of different things. English skills are an obvious um, part of publishing, um, but you know, you'll also be writing a lot of copy. And if you're a practical person who's good at organising things and you're really interested in people and what they do, how they live, what they're thinking, um, you know, that is also really, really useful for publishing. Um, I actually did um, anthropology at undergraduate level, um, and that might not seem like such an obvious fit for publishing. However, it's been so useful because I'm interested in what people are interested in, and therefore I want to produce stories that they want to read. Um, and I need to know where they are, what they're doing, what they're shopping, how they're doing it in order to reach them. 
And because publishing has evolved and grown, there are loads of different exciting new jobs that require a lot of different skills um, and are exciting because they're dynamic and changing. Um, things like data analysis, directing and producing film, audience behavior monitoring, talent management and discovery. And that's just scratching the surface. It is a brilliant time to join publishing. With a global pandemic, um, people have really rediscovered reading and stories, um, and they've become more and more important to people's daily lives in lots and lots of different formats. Most publishing are report. Most publishers are reporting like huge sales um, and are recruiting more and more staff than ever. So it's a growing industry. And at a time when newspapers and magazines have seen a little bit of a struggle, books are not. Um, it is also an industry solely has been solely based in London, but now that has changed. Uh, publishers are moving more and more remotely or outside of London. We're seeing the biggest publishers such as HarperCollins and Hachette um, moving out of London. So it's now much more a national industry. So if you're still interested in publishing as a possible career, stay with me and I'll take you through some of the, through some of the possible jobs you might do and the skills that you could gain in order to get into the industry. So an obvious one that everybody starts to ask me about and associates with publishing is editorial. Uh, that's the one that people immediately think of, um, possibly because they enjoy writing themselves and think that might be very transferable to editing other people's work. Um, however, there are many different editing jobs. So the first question to address is, you know, which uh, types of editors are there? Because they, they are very different to each other. Um, for example, a commissioning editor works with agents and scouts to find the next project um, to fit in with what people actually want to read and what they want to consume. They're the ones tasked with finding the next Harry Potter. So they are very important people. They have to negotiate and work out a budget to make sure that they will not lose money when they produce the book. So they also have to be very good at negotiation um, and be quite numerate and like working with a lot of different people. A copy editor, which I think is the one that most people think of when you say editing, um, is very, very different. Um, they work very closely with the manuscript and they make sure that there are no inconsistencies, that the writing and the layout is in the house style and that mistakes are picked up. Um, they have to be very good at detail, working at the desk for long periods of time and often working alone. That isn't to say that they don't work with the rest of the team because they do, but a lot of the time it's very close work and you have to be quite disciplined to stay at your desk and finish it. Um, although editorial is usually what people think of when they think of publishing, there are many different roles. So let's um, go on to another one. Um, marketing and communications. So marketing is a really creative part of publishing and often involves the most amount of writing, uh, which might surprise you. So if you're keen on writing, this might be the job for you. It's the marketing department who write the blurb on the back of the book, for example. Um, they write the advertising copy, uh, the copy for social media, any copy on posters, the information for booksellers and internal sales teams and so on. So without them, no one would know about the book and that would be terrible. So marketing has become more and more important. There are so many distractions and entertainments these days and more stories published than ever before. So it requires quite a lot of creativity to convince people that your story is the one that they should devote their time to. It's often a really fast paced, dynamic department working closely with colleagues in other parts of the publishing house, such as um, editorial, sales and design, production, 
and you have to have somebody um, employed who really keeps up with everything that people are interested in, not just in terms of books and publishing, but also generally, what are people talking about? What are they interested in? What are they thinking? Uh, what are they putting on social media? And then thinking creatively about how you could use that to persuade people to buy your book and to buy into your stories. Another part of um, really creative jobs in publishing is design and production. Um, I'm sure we've all bought a book because we fell in love with the cover or the beautiful design inside or the illustrations. And that's basically the work of the designer to make that book look as appealing as possible. So depending on the type of publisher and how big they are, they may have freelance designers or maybe they even have an in-house team. Whichever it is, if you're working in design, you'll be working with different teams of creative people like um, illustrators, artists, and you'll be working to set deadlines. Um, and those deadlines will be set by managing editors. And so you have to work with them as well. And um, you'll also be talking to marketing quite a bit. Um, especially given that uh, marketing take care of the cover art and come up with the um, design for that quite often and then you'll have to work with them. On the other hand you'll be also spending quite a bit of time alone at the computer um, really kind of just making sure and tweaking that design is perfect for the book. Um, for this line of work it's great therefore if you have an eye for detail but you're also full of visual ideas and know all you can learn um, certain programs like InDesign and Photoshop. Um, if you have an artistic flair and a creative mind that you really want to set free, then this could be the right choice for you. And production and design often gets lumped together, um, but the two are actually very different. Um, production staff are responsible for the end product, whether it's an ebook or whether it's a paperback book. They basically project manage the whole process and ensure that it actually reaches the printers if that's if it's a printed book um, and bookshops or online on time and to budget. They're extremely important as everybody else relies on them. Basically, without them, there would be no books, audiobooks, magazines made. Um, so being very, very organised and able to work to deadline, but also by persuading people uh, to do things for you by deadline, um, are really good traits to have. Sales. So many people are put off. This is a possibility for a career because I think they have the image of the used car salesman in mind. But if you have a real passion for stories and can talk about them enthusiastically to loads of different people, you might be good at sales. Um, I would say that I'm a case in point because I was quite a quiet person growing up and never thought in a million years I'd be any good at sales. However, working in a bookshop for many years taught me that there is no better job in the world than talking enthusiastically um, about stories that you love all day and seeing people happy because you help them discover a new story, a new book, a new audio book. Um, and what you do have to um, work towards targets and keep to budgets, but don't be put off by that. Um, I was not any good at maths at school, but when you apply it to something that you love, it totally changes and it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so related to sales, um, but a bit of a mysterious job if you're not in the industry and you're not familiar with the industry is rights. But honestly, I'm here today to tell you it's a fantastic part of publishing. Um, it's a very, very important part of publishing um, because once you've made that book or that audio book and done a deal with the author and the agent, you can sell the right to publish that book in other countries and in other languages across the world. 
And that's really exciting because you are helping people discover the story from lots of different places, as well as making extra money for, for the publisher, which is always important because more sales basically means that you get to make more lovely books, audio books, whatever, whatever it is that you're making. So also getting the book made into a film or TV production is also the job of the rights department. So you might find yourself negotiating with directors and producers in movie studios or TV studios. It's also the job of the rights department to make sure that contracts are correct and that nobody steals the content of your books, which is also absolutely vital. Um, I've worked in loads of different departments as a publisher, but rights was definitely one of the most exciting and dynamic jobs that I did, because basically I got to travel the world, meeting people from different countries. I went to lots of different book fairs, and there's actually one on the screen there. Um, that's the London Book Fair. And I met with loads of different film and TV directors. So if you like meeting people from different cultures and backgrounds, traveling the world, World, talking passionately about the stories, but you also have an eye for detail, rights might well be the career to consider in publishing for you. Publicity. Um, I think this one everybody presumes they know what it is, but what is actually the job that's involved? Um, so the publicity team create campaigns for books to encourage new and old readers to connect with the authors and the titles. They also organise all those lovely author tours, signings and interviews, everything to promote the story and the author. Um, as a publicist, you'll be working very closely with the author and you may well find yourself on the road a lot of the time. And so therefore, you'll need to be good at working with people, um, spotting opportunities to promote the title and the author and knowledgeable about what is going on in the world so that you'll know how to grab the attention of the masses in a really creative way um, and at the right time. I was lucky enough to be the spokesperson for Harry Potter at Waterstone's head office and was responsible for all those lovely um, midnight launches up and down the country. And there is no better job um, than connecting fans with their favourite author and enthusing about the book to as many people as possible through the media. I trained as a journalist um, because I initially thought, as many of you listening probably do, I wanted to be a writer. Um, and that training and my media contacts was very, very helpful for publicity. Um, and years later, I was actually on the other side of the fence organising author tours and events as a publisher and travelling up and down the country um, into various different schools, into different bookshops and giving lots of interviews um, and arranging it for the author at the time. It can be very stressful and you have to be very, very organised, but also a problem solver because events are want to go wrong at times and you have to solve any issues that come up. However, it is hugely rewarding uh, to put on a successful event is something you will never forget. Um, the moment I stood on the roof of P Waterstones in Piccadilly in London at a Harry Potter launch and I literally couldn't see the end of the queue because it was miles long is something I will certainly, certainly never forget. Um, so a fairly new department to publishing that many publishers are now putting in-house um, is the audio department. Um, we're now seeing a lot of different books published, what we call simultaneous publishing. And the, what that means is that uh, when the book comes out, it comes out in uh, paperback, uh, format or hardback, but also it comes out as an ebook and an audiobook on the same day of publication. So, as I said earlier, audiobooks and digital stories have become really popular, and this department is only likely to expand over the next few years. So, uh, this department controls who to cast as the narrator, organises and edits the scripts, and either directs and produces the audiobook in a studio in house or with, works with a freelance company to do that. If you love drama and filmmaking and editing video and audio, this might well be the career for you. I was lucky enough to direct and produce an audio book 
um, of one of our best-selling books and it was a really exciting experience. I got to edit the script and then work with the actor Christopher Eccleston for a few days to record it. It was an extremely satisfying feeling, I can tell you, when the book was released on Audible and it sounded fantastic and it got some brilliant feedback from readers. There's no better feeling. So, OK, um, how do you... Uh, get ahead when you're looking for jobs in publishing. Um, so there are loads of different things that you can do to prepare yourself for that very first job application. People will tell you it is really hard to get into publishing and that it's really competitive. But I tell you, I have re I have recruited a lot of publishers in the past and I can say this. A lot of the applications that I receive are the same. So basically English graduates who say that they love books and grammar. Um, so just make sure that yours stands out from the crowd. And here's a few ideas of how. So first of all, um, keep up to date with the world of publishing so that you look like you're already in tune with the industry. And one of the ways that you can do that is to sign up to the biggest trade magazine um, on the market, and that is called The Bookseller. Um, it's misleading, the title, because it's actually for publishing, um, probably more than bookselling. It's the main trade magazine for all publishing and book selling and related industries. And you'll find out who's who, um, what books are the best sellers, what the trends in books and genres, everything that you need to know. Um, and basically you can sign up and get a daily newsletter and it will give you the headlines. Um, so if you do nothing else, do that. Um, you can also sign up to Book Brunch. That's basically the daily newsletter for the book and publishing industry. So when you subscribe, you'll get a daily email, uh, more if there's a really important news flash um, with the headlines of what's going on in the book industry and also job alerts. So really helpful. Um, and if you want to gain some skills way in advance, which will be helpful to your career in publishing, then you might consider signing up to something called Book Machine. Um, Book Machine offers loads of different little short courses, including um, how to design covers, InDesign, marketing, editing, um, and they also do regular networking events. So everything that you need to get a start on some of these skills and put yourself above the crowd. And I would also say just generally keep up to date with what people are doing, what they're using, what they're talking about. What are they talking about on Twitter? Um, TikTok is still as popular as ever, but now is it sort of moving towards a different social media channel? What programs are popular at the moment that people are talking about? Publishers are always looking out for what is popular because they might be able to tap into this to promote their authors, their stories, or make a new book about a popular theme or a person or a topic. Finally, I would say this because obviously um, I teach um, at university on publishing, but consider taking a university course in publishing. It is a fairly new subject over the last few years, but now there's quite a few universities doing this. Um, there are some at undergraduate level, but many at postgraduate level. Uh, if you decide to do the postgraduate level, which is what most people do, it doesn't matter what you do for your undergraduate studies because publishing needs lots of skills from business to social science to media to data analysis. A good course like the one that I teach on at Manchester Metropolitan University will give you a really good insight into all the different departments in publishing, many of the different skills that you need and the contacts in the industry, as well as helping you find those precious job opportunities. It is certainly well worth considering. So what, another thing that you can do is get yourself publishing career ready, as I like to say. Um, so you can teach yourself a few of the programs that publishers like to use. Um, there are lots of YouTube videos and tutorials online to help you do this. The programs that I think will be most useful for this are Adobe InDesign and Photoshop. But there are also ones like Canva and Vengage, which are helpful in designing professional looking social media 
assets, just have a play around with them. Certainly in the case of Canva and Vengage, they are really easy to learn and you can just literally play around and make something look fantastic. Um, there are also ways in which you can use those programs, by the way, to design book covers and, in, in, and you know, entire books. Um, so just have a play with it and see what you can produce. So many of those programs that I mentioned have free trials. So you can just literally build up your portfolio online, which is what I recommend that you do, um, because you never know when you do go for that job or that course, um, you can just produce all the work that you've done and show, um, show them evidence that you have been having a go of gaining some of these skills. Um, I know this isn't going to be a very popular thing to say, um, but I would also practice presenting and pitching. Um, I'm afraid no excuses. Um, most of us are introverts that go into the book selling and publishing industry and nobody likes presenting, but it is literally just practice. Um, both pitching and presenting are absolutely vital skills in the publishing industry. So you know what, I would just pick your favorite book and see if you can pitch it to a few friends in just a few sentences and convince them that they should read the book. Then see if you can do the same for a topic that you're passionate about. Practice really does make perfect. I would recommend also recording yourself and playing it back you know, cringeworthy, um, but you know, just do that. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. Um, a word about experience. It isn't really necessary to get work experience in a publishing house. There are loads of different transferable skills from other places of the work, um, the, you know, so any administration or retail experience you gain will be fantastic. Um, and any work that you do at school or college around um, audio and video editing, writing copy, working in a library or in a bookshop will be extremely useful and publishers will see that those are very transferable skills. I would also say if you're on social media or online, consider setting up a little blog or a website devoted to writing and books. Um, or become a bookstagrammer through Instagram. Anything that helps show to, that you are really enthusiastic about books, about stories, about audiobooks, about publishing in a digital format or otherwise is fantastic um, and will definitely stand you in good stead when you're putting in for those jobs. So I really hope <laughs> that I have managed to persuade you that publishing is a great career for lots of different types of people. It's certainly one that I absolutely love and wouldn't change for the world. It's been fantastic talking to you today. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at the email address on the screen. Thank you very much. Bye.